What's going on? Just wanted to say thank you all, uh, all you that subscribe and all of you that hang out with me uh, for each and every video that I've been making. Um, this last video that I put out has gotten some pretty good, pretty good uh, reaction feedback. Um, the algorithms with YouTube haven't really been playing in my favor um, a whole lot as far as getting videos in front of the right people. So. Um, it looks like something went a little bit more right here than usual um, and there's a good amount of people watching and um, giving feedback and sharing a little bit more on Facebook and other platforms and stuff so it's been good um, really excited to build some hype around the build so again thank you for watching uh, if you haven't already subscribed make sure to go click that button make sure you uh, turn the bell so that way you get notified every time I post a video which at this point it's starting to be Saturday mornings so yeah uh, let's jump into it we're gonna jump into part two of back halfing the Subaru uh, we're gonna go ahead and start to kind of figure out what the mounting situation is going to look like um, kind of overcome a few things that are going to uh, kind of be a little bit more difficult there um, but again this is where the fun starts and uh, yeah stay tuned All right, so I've been tinkering here for a little bit off camera. I basically have the rear hub and everything mocked up pretty much where it's going to go. Um, from there, I've got kind of a rigged up setup to hold them into the front, um, the front links basically. Um, so got that in, it's pretty much measured out where it's going to be and, and to make sure everything is pretty damn close um, from there again these aren't going to be the links that we're going to be using so we are making do with what we have it's it's all going to work um, but it just takes a little bit of imagination and a lot of measuring so um, how it's going to work is um, again it's going to basically we're going to locate this bracket that we built in the last video we're going to then build um, basically tube here we're going to take a tube and connect it in here somewhere i'm not sure if i want to go straight up yet and meet in the middle here probably makes the most sense um, and then in the back i think i'm just going to go straight up on an angle uh, currently as this opposes the framework in the rear this is a 20 degree pitch to basically meet this section here um, to the top tube. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and actually uh, fix some of this. And then I'm actually gonna put this on a 10 degree angle and I'm gonna meet up with it on a 10 degree angle on some of our new steel that we got here. So yeah, we are figuring it out. Super excited. This is uh, kind of cool to see it starting to come together. Lots of measuring, making sure I'm not gonna forget anything, making sure the motor's gonna fit. Yeah, crazy stuff, so. Let's do it. We've got here, of course, a lateral link mounts here. And then um, what we did is we use uh, one of our fresh bars here, one and a half by three. Um, basically, again, a 10, 10 degree angle on each piece here to make it a full 20. And then from here on the back side where it's gonna meet up with the rearmost portion of the frame. It's actually just a straight 20 degrees and then we'll have to basically make the top fit since we obviously can't, since it's a flat piece of metal and not an end, uh, we obviously can't manipulate it in order to fit up perfect. So we basically will manipulate the end there and we'll go ahead and sink it down just like we did the front of the first piece of the frame and what you saw in part one. Uh, so we got these basically um, using our Yes Welder magnets here we got everything square and plumb. Everything is dead center. Um, and again, this is just going to locate from the back. And at this point, we have to uh, take a look, see where we're at. Um, we might tack, tack it in real quick, just one side. And then again, we're just going to duplicate. So the goal here is to 
basically mirror everything on each side in order to make sure that obviously this thing is going to go straight down the road. So let's uh, let's keep on going. totally finished like finished up fully welded in um, I started the left side and I did fully weld it um, I've been being super careful with measuring everything like literally eight times um, and it's it's straight it's you know parallel I've had to cut apart honestly a few different sections to correct it uh, obviously this portion being the most important um, and what I found was is that the left side here where it's meeting up with my control arms um, is actually about a quarter inch too far forward um, so it won't actually line up perfect like it should um, when I go to build this front section to tie it back into the frame in the front it's going to be off so what I'm going to have to do is actually cut this out um, I'm going to have to cut it out, clean it up, measure it eight times again, uh, make sure it's square, level, all the things, and then weld it back in before I even think about starting the front piece. So uh, this is kind of how it has to work, unfortunately, being that I don't have a, a fixture table that's going to show me everything perfectly where it needs to be. It's just uh, part of building it on the garage floor. So uh, let's go ahead and, unfortunately, get the cutting wheel off and uh, redo this. All right, so we have got basically everything welded in place where it needs to be uh, fixed it on up basically everything is square um, it's uh, slightly low on this side so it, when I when I weld this piece into place here um, I'm gonna have to throw a level on it and uh, kind of pull it into place as, as I tack it um, well you can see so just like the piece over here it's a pretty hefty angle both um, you know up and down and then it also goes uh, you know horizontal like that so this is basically how I did the other side too uh, this is all hand cut with the grinder um, again lots of measuring hold it up mark it trim it again hold it up trim it again um, kind of thing so this is rough cut as you can see um, but I'm pretty good with the cutoff wheel these days um, probably from having to do all of this um, but basically we're gonna clean this up we'll clean this section up here we basically figured out where it needs to uh, line up here just to, to match the other side uh, to make sure everything is square again this is where our engines gonna be sitting trans um, so it's important that everything is good symmetrical square everything to make sure that it's all gonna work right so Let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and clean this stuff up, uh, put a nice little bevel on it, basically get the top section welded in, and then as soon as I basically get the bottom tacked in where it needs to be, at that point I'll have to go ahead and trim it, 
and plate it because it, it doesn't meet up to where all corners are, are square like it's like that one is over there so we'll go ahead and do that get it in place get the structure you know of it all in where it needs to be and then we'll pull it apart flip this whole thing over get a look at the bottom and uh yeah this is a, a big big part of it and uh got some exciting stuff that will follow um but until then we need to button this thing up make it super strong and we still have to finish our outer trailing arm mounts too so lots to do let's do it <laughs> So in the last clip, you basically saw me getting the last portion of the lateral link mounts on. Um, basically, I, I do have some finish welding to do, as you can see. Uh, but the other part of it is you can see that I'm starting to uh, kind of see what the transmission, everything is going to look like. So um, basically everything in this video is to wrap up pretty much all the suspension components and mounting. Um, from there, we obviously in the next video are going to be working on mounting the trans and the engine. So, uh, we've got some parts coming from Barnes four wheel drive. I'm um, going to be doing some stuff with that in the next one. So, um, with the being so cold in Michigan right now, it's looking like every two weeks is going to be a little easier to, uh, record that way since, uh, it's a little difficult to keep the garage warm and, uh, make it you know, comfortable working out there. So, and staying efficient is, is kind of tough too when it's super cold too. But um, yeah, so it's gonna do it. Um, go ahead, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, um, like, definitely share, and uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think, and uh, it'll be great to hear from you. So appreciate your time again.